What's happening, you bad motherfuckers? It's Wednesday, the 29th of September. A beautiful fucking day to be alive. From the heart of Jersey, the joint is brought to you by motherfucking DraftKings. Listen, three weeks are in the books now. It's time to review the fucking tape. Football is at a fucking peak now. You understand me? You know if you're going to win, you know what the teams are made of, and you know the breakup. I'm looking forward to, you know me. I bet heavy on anybody who plays the Jets. It's that simple. The Jets are fucking terrible. But I'm looking forward to a couple games this week. I'm looking forward to Atlanta against Washington. I'm looking forward to Miami against the Colts. And Monday night is a fucking tremendous game. Who the fuck do we have Monday night? We got the motherfucking Raiders against the Chargers. Listen to me. DraftKings has an offer that's bananas. They're giving all new customers $150 instantly just bet a dollar on any football game college nfl pop warner i don't give a fuck you heard me cocksucker head to DraftKings sportsbook app now bet one dollar and get 150 in free bets instantly if sportsbook is not available in your state no fucking problems DraftKings still has huge cash prizes for grabs with their daily fantasy contest However you play, DraftKings is giving all new customers a free shot at millions of dollars in total prizes with their first deposit. You can't beat that. That's why I'm with DraftKings. I love them. I fucking work with them. I love them. I place bets, whether it's the casino, the roulette, the, the blackjack, baseball, football, basketball, college basketball, college football, hockey. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code Joey to get you $150 in free bets when you place a dollar on any football game. That's promo code Joey. DraftKings, the official sports betting partner of the NFL. New Jersey, Indiana, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, Colorado. New customers only. Minimum $5 deposit, $1 wager. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Now, if you got a gambling problem, we don't want you on DraftKings. Take care of your problems. Call 1-800-GAMBLER. If you're in Indiana, call 1-800-9-WITH-IT. But if you got no problems and everything's ready to go, DraftKings Sportsbook app is waiting for you. Like I said, whether it's MMA, Bellator, UFC, NFL, DraftKings has you covered. This weekend, bet a dollar to win $150 and knock yourself out with DraftKings, cocksuckers. The joint is also brought to you by Me Undies. Boo! It's four bitches. That means you'll be pissing in your pants one way or another. It's a spooky time of the month. You're going to a haunted house or you're drinking too much at a fucking game. Go ahead and ruin your pants. You can buy some fresh ones from New Undies. Me Undies. New Undies. I don't know what the fuck. Let me tell you something about Me Undies. They're tremendous. They're made with this cotton that is breathable. They're so fucking comfortable. I have been wearing Me Undies. For the last six years And that's all I wear Whether you're out running a killer Or being abducted by aliens this Halloween At least you'll have a fresh pair on Listen to the names of some of these prints they got I see you, my boo Trick and treats I like that one Lazy bones And the lazy pumpkin MeUndies are designed to be the softest thing on earth Softer than a baby's butt Softer than a feather how? MeUndies signature micro Maldal fabric literally grows from trees. That means that these undies are soft and sustainable. What's better than that? Nothing. It's like a little baby's hand holding your nutsack, nice and comfortable. They offer a million sizes from extra small through 4X. Different cuts for different butts is their motto. Get some bras, socks, and loungewear. You know me, I love me undies. Get 15% off your first order and free shipping and 100% money back guarantee at meundies.com slash Joey. That's meundies.com slash Joey. You better make a decision quickly because there's somebody behind you. I made you look, cocksuckers. Meundies.com slash Joey. I'm going to give you 15% off your first order and free shipping and 100% money back guarantee. You can't get that anywhere. The joint is also brought to you by my personal favorite. Wait till you get to be 58 years old. You're going to be drinking this CBD fucking cream. 
whether it's the cream, whether it's the gel, the bath ball, the kinesiology tape, the capsules, the gummy bears, the tincture. Let me tell you something. I've been taking a thousand, fifteen hundred milligram tincture since I started acupuncture just because you're in it to win it. Oh my God, I feel fucking great. I sleep like a baby. My pains are gone. I mean, I'm getting old. You're not going to beat that. But for temporary relief of pains, aches, I put a piece of tape of that kinesiology tape on my knee. I'm good to fucking go for 10 hours. Listen, go to CBD Lion. Read the third-party lab results. Knock yourself out. This is a real deal holy feel. You're not buying CBD of some fucking guy that doesn't even know what the fuck oxygen is. So do yourself a favor. Go to CBDLion.com. Read. I want you to read and learn about CBD, CBN, and CBY and how it can be advantageous to you. Right now, go to CBDLion.com. Read up. Try Start off with the, the caps. You're going to be fucking amazed how well you're going to feel. Press in code Joey and get 20% off the normal price delivered right to your motherfucking crib. That's CBDLion.com slash Joey. Get 20% off your order delivered right to your motherfucking house. It's Wednesday the 29th. Let's get this motherfucking party started, cocksuckers. What's happened, you bad motherfuckers? It's Wednesday, the 29th. It's almost fucking over. I was telling Mike the other day I was driving, minding my own business, not bothering anybody. And I must have hit the wrong button on Sirius. It must have been the station for bad music because they put on a fucking Yoko Ono song. And let me tell you something. I told Mike the only proper response was to fucking crash the fucking car, guys. It was brutal, brutal. Brutal, uh, brutal. I don't know about you guys, but oh my God, she was going, ay, 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 and I'm like driving, trying to figure it out. You know, like when you freeze up and you can't press a, it's like getting like, you ever get your, your finger stuck in something and you freeze up for like three minutes, you don't know what to do. You pull away and it hurts more. You put, I couldn't even figure out the radio. I'm like, get this fucking Yoko Ono off my fucking thing. Listen, I don't hate Asians. I just hate Yoko Ono. I don't want people to say, well, you're making fun of, no, it's just Yoko. I ate Chinese food yesterday you know me dog i gotta eat my shit every fucking week i got a chinese restaurant down the corner i'm there twice a week if you think i'm fucking with you tremendous i get the three flavor shrimp holy shit with black bean sauce on some fucking rice i only eat a half a cup of rice my points plus it spikes up your fucking diabetes oh they're fucking tremendous i've always liked chinese food i think that's the happiest i'm about is that I have Chinese food at my disposal. And if this restaurant down the block is closed, walking distance, the one fucking closer to my house is even better than this one. They have different things that are good. They're not like, I like the pork fried rice over here. I like the egg drop soup. And I like the three flavored shrimp. That other place has tremendous shrimp egg foo young. I mean, fucking old school shrimp egg foo young. You put some sauce on that motherfucker, it's all protein. It's shrimp and egg. You can't fucking lose. Your dick gets fucking harder than arithmetic, Jack. But I'm good. I had a good weekend. I had a good Monday, a good fucking Tuesday. Acupuncture. I'm back. I'm back with the act. And you could tell. That was the last of my many fucking uh, things I hadn't done from L.A. I'm back steady. That was my fourth thing, my fourth session. I also went to jiu-jitsu last week, and I'm going to join the class. I'm going to take another private or two and then maybe start going to the class because I'm out of fucking breathing shape. I mean, I'm in shape. I've been lifting weights and jumping up and down and all that shit. 
but uh, I'm not in jujitsu shape, but I'm happy I went. Thank you guys for encouraging me to go. A bunch of people were like, when are you going back to jujitsu? And I felt kind of fucking shitty about it, but I just had fucking knee surgery. You know, I can't be jumping up and fucking down right now. So I wanted it to get settled. I'm still having a hard time riding the bike around the neighborhood, but I ride the stationary bike and, you know, I'm okay for now. I'm deadlifting, I'm squatting, you know, so I just can't kneel, you know, so I can't give fucking blowjobs. That sucks, okay. but what are you going to fucking do? How come chicks that give blowjobs don't get fucked up knees? Just fucking guys. I can't kneel on them. I had to put a brace and a fucking knee pad and the right knee hurt, but you know what? The more I go, the more I'll get used to it and whatnot. Fucking uh, bet against the Jets. Listen, I don't have any betting uh, knowledge for you guys. I'm dumb when it comes to that. I don't know who's pitching. I don't know the quarterback of the team. I got to ask Jimmy and his son. His son gives me the bet because kids know about what's going on. So if I'm going to bet a football team or something, I'll ask his kid. This week, I didn't know who to bet. So I just bet against fucking the Jets because listen, they're terrible. Number one, I mean, they're god awful. The starting quarterback went down. And number two, they were playing Denver in Denver on the Lord's Day. Everybody knows that's an automatic and shit. Four o'clock game, shit. That's when Denver fucking thrives on the Lord's Day on a Sunday. Nice, the sun was out, no snow. Boom! It was like 17 nothing at the half. I was happy. I only bet fucking 25 bucks. But hey, bitches, 25 bucks is 25 bucks where I come from. What did you win on Sunday? That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm just trying to have a good time here today. That's it. It's all about having a good time, smiling, having some fun. I was telling the people on the Patreon podcast that Sunday I went over to my friend's house and I had some fucking at the Puma's house. Jody Puma is one of the best fucking cooks ever. My neighbor, holy shit. She made a bolognese sauce that make your asshole go like this. You ever have your asshole just rattle like this? You ever been driving and your asshole just goes, weep, wop, weep, wop. <laughs> this bolognese was so fucking good, and she made a loaf of fucking garlic bread. It had so many fucking garlic cloves on it, I almost lost my mind. When I bit into the first thing, like breadcrumbs didn't fall off. It was fucking garlic things just went all over. But I love garlic because that's when I do my best work. You understand me? So... I had the three pieces of garlic bread. I had my little bolognese. I relaxed a little while, and then I went over to Jimmy's to watch the Raiders against Miami. You know that Jimmy Florentine's a big Miami fan. So when the Dolphins play, I go over there, and I support them. I don't, I'm don't. i not a fan of anybody. Listen, I'm a fan of the team. I go to a game with a hat with a minus 10 on it. I, I, I'm, I don't have a favorite fucking team. I just, you know, I, I don't know what I'm doing with football, so I'll go talk to them. But Sunday, I went over there after I ate the fucking garlic, and there was a bunch of guys over there, you know, hanging out, having a good time, saying shit. And one of the guys started farting, like he was blowing these wet farts. And I'm like, what the fuck? You know, and I didn't smell him. They, I, I couldn't smell him at all. I was like five, six feet away from the dude. So at one point, I'm sitting, I go, ooh, I got a fart. You know, I didn't know what was going to come out of my ass. I didn't know the garlic had processed that fast. I blew a fart, guys. That was so fucking bad. And then, about eight minutes later, I blew another one. That was so bad. Everybody was watching the game with their fucking nose covered. That means I fucking won. People were going, what the fuck is that? I fought it on the couch. I got up like half hour later to go pee. I peed. I came back to the couch. And when I sat down, the fart had gotten into the couch. And it came right back out at me. Like, you could re-smell it again. People were like, you fought it again? I'm like, no. Nah. The fart went into the couch, and when I sat down, it blew the air out. And here's the beauty. I went into the bathroom a half hour later, and the bathroom still smelled like fucking garlic from me just walking in there after I fought. It was a tremendous fart. Listen, those garlic farts, they go into your fucking clothes. That's when you know you did a good fucking job. You understand me? They were like, what the fuck's going on? I saw Jimmy at the gym yesterday. He was like, dog, those are some great fucking farts. He goes, I went down there two hours later to get something, and I could still smell the residue from it. Garlic farts are always the fucking best. I, listen, I, I love it. I love them because nobody knows they're coming out. They were silent but deadly, just how I fucking like them. This is a big week for me. You guys know what's going on this week. Uh, it's a big week for fucking New Jersey. I'm really proud of uh, this week. On Friday, the Many Saints in Newark comes out. We've been talking about it for two years. 
I promise you'll never hear about it fucking again after today unless you guys bring it up or ask me a question or whatever. Um, I'm very proud of this fucking movie for certain fucking reasons, you know. I never thought I would ever work get to work with David Chase, and that had me a little bummed, not like, I'm a little, no. I just, it was just like, you know, I'll never get to work with David Chase, you know. In 1998, I came back here. In 99, I came back here to get in with Global. Uh, Global is like an entertainment group that booked a bunch of rooms and shit. I came in to get with Global. I came to get with, I wanted to talk to some agents. I wanted to talk to a couple of different films. Like, I wanted to do something with Law and Order. Anyway, so what you usually do is you tape a set. You, um you know, put your reel on there, like what movies you've been in, and that's your fucking demo reel, you know, when people say to you, do you have a demo reel, I could finally say, yes, I, I didn't have anything on there at this time in 98, I think I had like a few college films, and maybe, uh, I didn't, I never got the pilot from Bronx County, so I just had all these college films, and my stand-up, you know, and you come and you drop them off on an envelope with a headshot and a resume and a bio and, and hope they call you, you know, so my buddy owned a, a tape duplication thing, so I went to him early in the day and we duplicated a bunch of tapes and in the afternoon I, I went out into the city to drop off tapes, you know, and one of the places that my manager, I had a manager at the time, great guy, he called me up and he's like, hey, I got you this audition for The Sopranos, go in there and drop off the fucking tape. Well, I got busy dropping off the other tapes at Law and & Order and all these other shows. I forget. And I never made it to The Sopranos. And I go, you know what? Who gives a fuck? I'm not a singer anyway. You know, I can't fucking sing. I thought the show was a singing show. And then in 99 or, or 2000, I went to do the Toyota Comedy Festival. And uh, it was a 10 o'clock show. And I went up on stage. And the next thing you know, fucking uh, one of the girls that worked for... Uh, the casting director was there and she asked me, is Georgina Walken senior? And I go, no. And she goes, well, you're going to see it tomorrow at 11 o'clock in the morning. That's how fast it was. I was just getting off the stage at midnight. And she's like, you're going to see it tomorrow at 11 o'clock in the morning. I go, okay. So I got that at 11 o'clock in the morning. I was supposed to be in Buffalo. I let her know the truth. And I'm waiting on the street. And all of a sudden, a lady comes up to me. She's like, do me a favor. Go upstairs and leave a card with your name on it you'd be perfect for my show. Are you an actor? And I go, I'm a stand-up, and I am perfect for your show. I'm your 11 o'clock. And she goes, you're Joey. And i never forget, we walked in, we were talking. I was nervous. I was, uh, you know, when you get nervous and you go for an audition, you're gawky. You say shit that you don't want to say, so I always check myself not to get fucking nervous or something. But I remember on the elevator, I said to her, can I ask you a question? Are you really... Christopher Walken's wife and she goes yep and I'm like holy shit I go can I tell you something I go and this was I took a chance saying this I go I think his best movie is at close range and she just looked at me and she's like you're right everybody thinks it's a deer hunter but I leaned towards at close range you're right and we started talking and that helped our relationship a little bit I went in I read I put it on tape and she told me she goes listen go back to acting class you know Get you, tighten up your shit, and I'll keep in touch with you. And we did. I kept in touch with her over the years. How you doing, Georgian? I booked this. But then, opportunity knocks, I booked a, show, a short film called The Mezzos for Fox. It didn't pay, but it was a great script. I got to play a gay mobster, and it was good of good quality. So I took that tape, and I sent it to Georgian. And she called me within like a year and asked me, to audition for Pussy's Brother. I was working on Spider-Man 2. I put the audition on tape. I booked it, but there was a an issue. Somebody said I said something to somebody, so they fired me before I could ever shoot. Was I bummed? I was a little bummed, but by that time, I had already gotten acting chops, and I know that when you go to an audition, just prepare yourself. Do the best you can, and when you walk in, fucking kick ass, and when you walk out, you won't have any doubts. I was already... I had, or, I had already had that mind uh, set, you know. So when I didn't get it, I didn't get it. That's nothing you could do. God didn't want me to have it. And then two years ago, somebody let me know that they were doing a prequel. I auditioned. 
And it was funny. I still remember packing my bag for New York and going, this is a great opportunity for me. Um, everything happens for a reason in life. I got to do this movie. I got to work with David Chase before I end my career. So me getting fired in 2000 was like a godsend. I wasn't really ready. I wasn't ready to shoot at that high level. And I knew that. At least I was honest with myself and I knew that. I wasn't ready in 2000, but I was ready like a motherfucker in 2019. So when I got the call to do this, at first I was a little apprehensive. I was I had some doubts, you know, that's David Chase. I don't want to fuck up in front of David Chase, but you know what? One of my dear friends, Tom Popper, talked me into it, and uh, here we are today, September 29th. Uh, I got a movie under my belt. I got a great character, and uh, I did great. I've seen the movie three times already, and again, because of Kathleen Narducci, I did great. I did great. I belong there. Huh? You watched yourself? Yeah, I watched myself. I looked at my timing. Everything was great. Uh, I knew I was a gentleman on the set. I knew I did everything I was supposed to do. And I got to be honest with you. I'm going to pat myself on the back for you guys. I'm very proud of myself, and I'm very proud that you guys finally woke me up out of my fucking slumber. And uh, I'm looking at myself a little differently now. Yeah, I'm proud of me too. I'm proud of all you motherfuckers. And now, without further ado, Mr. David motherfucking Chase. Check one, two. Welcome to Uncle Joey's Joint. How are you, David? It's a masterpiece. Oh, come on. Well, how are you? I'm good. 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 Were, were you there on Wednesday night? No. I was there. I was there. Did I see you? No. I was 10 feet from you, and they told me to turn around and walk inside. So I didn't know what was going on. They said, go in. So me, Nick Valalanga, walked in, uh -huh. and then you guys it. went and took a picture. And I was like, what would you make us go in for? You know, the whole, yeah, it's like, it's been typical, the typical of this movie that little details and things are screwed up. But it was great. It was there to, I was happy to be there on your big night. Our um, big night, our big night. Our big night. They loved it, but it was really your big night, brother. This is all about you. I have a couple questions and I'll let you be. I know that you've been getting beat up the last three weeks. No, I haven't been getting beat up. I'm just, I'm, yeah, I'm getting tired. Yeah, you get doing interviews. Yeah, it gets old, so I understand. I wanted to ask you a few questions. It's not about the many saints. It's just generalization, and I'll let you go. Number one, how much do you love New Jersey? Uh, well, I, my number one answer would have to be I don't live there. That's why you love it? I could if I... Um, my memories of New Jersey are extremely positive extremely positive and I, I i i could live there very easily uh, right now we're living in california because of various illnesses in the family and stuff but i mean essex county i really i loved it a lot uh it was a great place to grow up let's put it that way yes it uh, was uh eight miles from New York City, and you hit the age of 18, where the drinking age was 18, and you drive into New York City, and sometimes we would just go, come out of the tunnel, go around the corner, there was a Puerto Rican deli, buy a huge bunch of six packs, keep the car running, get back in the car, get back in the tunnel, and go back to Jersey, and take the beer back there and have a party. But also, we did a lot of drinking in the city. Yeah. And the kids used to get killed on the way back, and, uh, I, it was a great time, really. You know, people always say to me, these stories that you tell cannot be true about you growing up, and it's they're all true. I mean, they're all... I had a great childhood as a kid, even though I didn't have parents. You know, New Jersey filled the void, 
Italians filled the void for me. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I never forgot it. While I sh was shooting a movie, I got so caught up in the whole Jersey thing that I actually moved back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you were you were in Philadelphia though too, weren't you? No, I was in L.A. I was in L.A. when I shot the movie. But I got a bunch of cookies from you from Philadelphia. Yes. <laughs> Those are great cookies because a friend yeah. of mine is from Philly and he sends uh, me those cookies. So I figured uh, you'd like those Italian cookies. They were great. They are they were great. great. No, it was, I mean, it was a long time ago and it was kind of country where I lived. It was small town America like you'd see in the movies. Um Kind of country. When I lived there, some people had, you no, know, there are no more cows, but people had horses. And you could buy corn and tomatoes at the local stand. What was I say to you? Um, now, by me, I live in South Jersey. It's beautiful, but it's very equestrian. I yeah, had no idea that New Jersey was the number one state for horses. My well, wife's know, from Tennessee, and she's excited. Daughter, I'm sure you've read about it. Springsteen's daughter won some Olympic prize. Yes. Equestrian, yeah. She went to the Olympics or something. So, yeah, it's very equestrian. A lot of trees. I mean, I'm, I grew up in North Jersey, in North Bergen, where it's a concrete jungle. Yeah. And then to come down here where it's, uh, you know, just... It's beautiful. Trees, yeah. deer. My daughter saw a bear a couple weeks ago. I mean, it yeah, has just yeah. been a... It's Somebody a great... told me yesterday, they, they were in the Sopranos neighborhood, and they saw a bear crossing the street through the window, a little young bear. Um, that place where the... Did you ever... Did we ever... No, we never shot at the Soprano house. No. No. Well, that place was, that's where I grew up, right there in that town. And it's now a development of kind of like big houses. That was a, my, a, a swim club that my wife's family belonged to called Wildwood Swim Club. It's in the middle of the woods. And all the pa patio furniture, everything was like Appalachian style, you know. You could have, you could have been in upstate New York. And the pool was huge. And there was nothing around it but trees. And, you know, they had a, a soda fountain there where you could buy stuff. It's all gone. It's all houses now. That's too bad. But What are you going to do? Question you, number two I had for you was these characters that you had in the show, the TV show. Yeah. Where did you come up with these names and these characters? I mean, you know, from little, from Big Pussy to... They were just so, they stood alone, these characters. The same kind of characters I grew up with in Jersey. Mm -hmm. right. You know, it's the same well, kind of characters. didn't really stand alone. There was a lot of them. But um, let's see. I mean, Tony, the name Soprano came from a kid I went to high school with, who was also the cousin of my father's business partner, an adult version. Uh, his name was Soprano. Um Pussy, well, I was told that by a, um, a detective who worked for, uh, what, do you, what do we call them, the state police in Jersey? Troopers. Troopers, yeah. He was a, a, a detective who worked for the troopers. And I've read about them since. The, the, um, their name was, what the hell was their name? But anyway, they were brothers. It was John... He was Big Pussy, and then there was his brother, Little Pussy, and they got the name because they were um, uh, cat burglars. They used to sneak into people's houses and steal. So that's where they got that name. I mean, it was before people, I think it was before people knew that Pussy was not, had not been made an impolite word, you know? Okay. Now, while you were writing on Hill Street Blues and all that stuff, I never how, wrote on those. Oh, things. you never wrote on How long did you have this vision in your head of this show? Oh, uh, not long. Um, 
I was writing those other shows and I switched. My deal ran out wherever it was, Universal. And my whole career was based on I would get a t TV development deal. So in other words, for two years, your salary was paid and you could do anything you wanted to. You were supposed to be developing TV shows. So I would have to do that at the same time as I was tr trying to write movies, uh, which they didn't care about at all. Um, but if I had made one of those movies, which I never did, they would have owned it. But um, so I was going back and forth on those deals for a long time. Um, and they were, they were really to, to help get me into the movie business, but it never worked. Um, it never worked. But I wrote a lot of those things. Rockford Files, Police Woman, um, Kolchak, The Night Stalker. I just, I forget them all. These were all the kids, these were all the shows I watched as a kid. Really? The yeah. Night Stalker, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. The Night Stalker was, did you get scared? Yes. Yeah, see, I know, to us, in making the show, it wasn't scary at all. And Darren McGavin became kind of an asshole. And he wanted to run the whole show. And my friend Paul, who was the producer, who had brought me along, that was like my second job, argued with him, and he, he was replaced. He was replaced and, and gotten rid of it, sort of at the same time. It was mutual. Um, and they brought in this new guy. I stayed the whole season. Um, and it was just, you know, it was... And it got sillier and sillier and sillier that this, this one guy would go out and search of these monsters every week. It was really ridiculous. You know. <laughs> well, it was just uh, that the original movie had been great. Now, he was a crime reporter in Las Vegas, and showgirls were being murdered in Vegas, and nobody thought it was a vampire. He, and he began to think that it was because of reading and and it, and it was it was a vampire, and uh, so after that they did another one, another movie. About, I don't know what it was about, and then they did the show with a, with a monster a week. We had to make up monsters. We didn't have enough. It was it was fun. I'll tell you, now, Darren was a pain in the ass, but it was fun. And we had a big argument. You know, it was it was a seven day show. It was an hour show. We used to shoot it in seven days. Holy shit. And a lot of it had to be, it was supposed to be at night. And night shooting, as you know, is very costly and more difficult. And they wanted, so the new producer came in and he said, now listen, who says that a vampire can't go out in the daytime? Because they wanted to shoot in the daytime. And I said, you know, I was just a guess. I said, no, that's not what vampires do. Well, I know. That's what they say, but who says there can't be a special vampire that goes out in the daytime? And I, I wanted to write a book called Vampire Logic, which would explain everything from the vampire's point of view, but I never did. But it, it, we used to have these fights all the time. Um, it was really cheap. And so it wasn't, to me, it was never scary. Although I was a scaredy cat kid, I loved monster stories. I like them to an extent. Like, I like them. I really like them. One of the guys who worked on the show was a guy named Michael Kozel, who later co-created Hill Street Blues. And he was very funny. I mean, we just we had, you know, we were brought up guys in our twenties making fun of that stuff while we were doing it. It was great. David, last night while we were doing the screening, I thought about something that somebody had said. They had a somebody was asking a question, and he said that he thought it was one of the funniest shows he had ever seen. Now, you and I both know that when you wrote the show, when you look at the listings, it says a drama. I know. You know, it's a drama. I know. How did you make this show so effing funny? Because I laugh my ass off, and it's tough to make me laugh. So do I. So do I. I watch the old ones, and I think, God, this is funny. 
Hilarious. I know, it had to be that way. It's just, I, I think everybody who was on the show had a talent for delivering that kind of thing. Um, Jim was good at it. Jim understood it. He, he, he had some failings at doing comedy, but I don't know. They, it, they just seemed fun. They just seemed funny to me. I mean, that was done like sort of the, the years, kind of the end of the mob, you know? Um, they were getting put in jail a lot. You know, drugs had really put a dent in them because selling and doing drugs because there was those new rules. I forget what they were called, but the older wise guys, if they stole some money, they could do five years in jail. That wasn't, you know, a problem. I mean, it's a problem, but they could do it. But the new rules were drug offense, federal prison, 35 years. And those guys couldn't take it. And so they would ride out their friends. And that's how it all started to fall apart. Because, I mean, there. I, I always say this to people. I think the, uh, when you did the uh, whatever for Christopher from Moltisante, when he was doing drugs, the uh, intervention. intervention. Yeah. I think that is one of the funniest things that ever hit TV. That's my personal opinion, not because you're in the room. I'm telling you this, that I have thought of this over and over. That is my favorite all-time scene on The Sopranos. Really? Well, all that actually, intervention, when he calls his mother a whore and all that, I'm dying of laughter. I'm dying. Oh, yeah. Fuck yeah. you, Silvio. You fuck all the whores over there and his yeah. wife and... <laughs> Just it was, just, and then all of a sudden they're fighting and they're kicking each other. It was an intervention, right? It was supposed to be an intervention, you know. Even though you're a, a drama writer, I got to tell you, I learned from you watching the show as a comic. Well, you know, but the thing is, I was supposed to be a drama writer. Those shows are called what? By the TV Academy, those sh our shows are called dramas. Um. And from the beginning, from the Night Stalker, there was a lot of humor in it. I don't know if you've, got, if you've gone back and looked at it. There's a lot of stupid, silly humor, cartoonish. So I got some of my chops there. The Rockford Files had a lot of humor in it. Smarter, more witty, not so goofy, but had a lot of humor. Um, so I was really, by the time I arrived at Sopranos, that's what I knew how to do was to write action or drama shows or whatever kind of show and also put a lot of humor in it. And I always felt that, um, you know, in, in my real life, I used to see funny things happen at the worst time. We've all seen it, um, you know. Um, and I couldn't get enough of it. I loved doing it. You know, it seems like you have comedic influences and I would have to say, because I love them also, it would be your your writing is in the Bob Newhart realm. Oh, really? I oh, love yeah. Bob yeah. Newhart. That dude has always made me laugh, his deadpan delivery. But when I yeah. see your writing, the type of non-jokes that you write, because they're non-jokes that... No, they're not. Yeah. And uh, I, I laugh my ass off. Even in this movie last night, there was a couple things that a couple lines, a couple things that you did that were just brilliant. You know, oh, his, yeah. you the Italian that. girl, when she says motherfucker, I almost died. Oh, yeah, right, right. I almost, even those little things, like I would never, as a comic, think that was funny. You hit the fucking nail with well, the head. it's situation, you know. It's situation comedy, really. It's, uh, it's, inter, it's interpersonal comedy. I mean, as a stand-up comic, you can, you're only talking to yourself, right? Right. You've got to come up with ways you can, ways to say, well, this guy told me, whatever. But, the, you know, comedy and drama on a stage, or it's all about conflict. It's all about one person believing one thing, the other person believing another, and they argue, and they fight. Whether it's a pleasant fight, a uh, bad fight, it's always funny for some reason. And you hit it on uh, the when like simple things like even when in the series when the kids when Tony went out 
to see what uh, Janice and his father were doing, and there was a card game, you know. The card game breaks up, and all of a sudden you show a clown getting arrested. How fucking funny oh, that, is that? Right, right. <laughs> a clown right. is getting arrested. What did a clown do? Well, clown what could a clown was, possibly do to get arrested? The clown was actually a guy who made his living doing clown work at birthday parties, <laughs> and he was obviously a, a degenerate gambler, and he was down there, you know, <laughs> earning. earning. <laughs> he probably was saying, well, you know what? Oh, my God, it's almost 2 o'clock. I got to get out of here. Look, at one more hand. <laughs> Yeah. No, it's a. It was uh, your comedy is great. Before the Sopranos, before the first episode hit, did you think it would ever become what it did? No, not at all. In fact, I used to tell my wife we got picked up for thirteen episodes, so we had made the pilot, so that left, left twelve to do. I used to tell her, I'd say, "This thing is never going to go anywhere." I said, "There's all the mob people have had it." It's just, it's tired. But I guess what we did was different enough. It was real, it was real kind of like, you know what Cafone means, right? It was like kind of Cafone comedy. It wasn't, they weren't, wasn't um, the Corleone's with ties and all that, you know, somber shit. It was, I mean, I, it was, believe me, that was great. It was kind of low life, middle Lower middle class, working class. I think a lot of people related to that. I think people could say, oh, my cousin Eddie is like that. Oh, my cousin Frankie's. They say he's you know, involved in that. No, I loved every bit of it. I sucked it all in. I was in New York dropping off tapes, and my agent called and said, drop off a tape at uh, Georgine Walken's office for The Sopranos, and I was like, I can't fucking sing. And I didn't drop it off. I never dropped it off. And I'm in Cleveland, I don't know, a year later. And this show comes on, and I'm blown the hell away. I caught it from the last half hour. And I went home and I asked my friends, have you seen the Soprano show? I was supposed to read for it. Right. And uh, it blew my goddamn mind. So. But it's great I, having you. Uh, you were a great presence on that show. I, I, one of my favorite things is your is you talking to Joe DiMaggio. I love I love that. And you know he did hang up. The guys who who ran Newark, the Borgiardi family, they had a big mansion. Richie Borgiardo had. A, they were a, they were the New Jersey crew of uh, the Genovese family, I believe. And he had a big mansion up in Livingston. And that was all true. And George Raft used to hang out there and DiMaggio. So that was all based on truth. So, see, and whenever it's based on real stuff, it helps, I think. Well, I knew that you had to base this on something, something that you saw growing up in your everyday life, and you really captured, I mean, stuff that I would forget, all the Catholicism. You know, the wakes. I've been here a year. I've been to three fucking wakes. Really? For 23 years, I, for 20, 30 years, I didn't go to a wake. Really? I've been here a year. I've been to three wakes already. You know, I got invited. I, think I got involved with a lot of them through the show because people, you know, it was a large group of people. People would die. Or their relative would die. Tony Sirico's mother died. We had to go to the wake. And his, his brother, who was a priest, gave, I don't know what you'd call it, a eulogy or something, and he said, we must believe, we must understand that I was inside that body for nine months. So, <laughs> you know, I know. <laughs> Jesus. Oh. David, That's I want to thank I mean. you. That's what I mean. It's crazy. crazy. It really is crazy. And no, but I knew that you had written this off your experiences growing up in Jer I had a, my, my best friend owns a funeral parlor, David. Who does? My best friend. Oh, really? Till today. We grew up together. You know how many bodies yeah. I went to pick up with them? Really? Oh, my God. How many joints I dipped in formaldehyde? You know. Ooh, oh, my God. You have no idea. You know, we would just. So when you would have all the wakes and stuff, I was like, this guy has hit 
New Jersey on the head. You just hit everything on the head. So yeah, well, when I was a kid, I was interested in you know you're interested in wakes and stuff like that, spooky stuff. What goes on back there? And I used to like thinking about it. My father told me when he was young, he was working with my grandfather on a uh, on a funeral home in Pittsburgh, I believe, and um, he fell asleep down in the butt room with the bodies and um he woke up and what the body sat up because you know the gas inside the body makes it move and he completely freaked out and you know i, I just love i love those kind of stories i've been his friend for 45 years and he still hasn't told me what they do in the embalming room really because they well, have to the take movie, an oath in the movie it says that tony is trying to sneak into where right. they do the bodies <laughs> <laughs> he's trying to he snuck in to see what they do to the bodies. I was laughing when he said that. David, I want to thank you for everything. I want oh, to thank, thank you for you what for you did for New Jersey. I want to thank you for the best show of all time. Oh, uh, well. Thank and I want you to thank you for putting thank me in a great movie. Well, I hope we can do some more. And if yeah, me too. That show, I hope we can do something else. Me too. Is really? Nicole around? What? She is, is yeah. Want me to call her? Yeah. Nicole, could you come in here? Joey wants to talk to you. I'm not actually going to be on this podcast. She doesn't want to be on the podcast. She doesn't want to be. Yes, come on. I want to say hi to you, but. I want to say hi to you, and I want to thank David and you. And I want to tell David that you're the best producer ever. You kept us together like glue. You were great to work with. We had some great nights together. It took me six months to get over the experience. I was heartbroken. It was great. I didn't care about the long night. I love all that stuff, so. And I'm really proud to be in this project. This is a great project. Great. Well, so I want to thank the both of you. Brought a lot to it. You brought a lot to it. Oh, you you were great, David. I learned a lot on this. So thank you, and thank you for uh, reigniting my love for New Jersey and making me move back here. All it's right. been great. Yes. yes. <laughs> I'm here. I love you guys. Love How'd you it go too. last night in L.A.? Very good. Good. It's a different crowd. Yes. It went, but it went well. He got to hang out with Frankie Valley, though. Yes, Frankie came. I think that's pretty cool. That's yeah, fun. he lives in Calabasas. That's right. Yeah. yeah. That was, how's he doing? He looks great. He's got to be 80-something, 85. 85? Yeah, I don't know. I think so. Maybe. He might be yeah. older. And he looks about 65. Doesn't he? Yeah, no, he really did he look very great. good. He looked great. And, and he, he's still touring. He had a beautiful suit on. Yeah. Good. Well, I love you guys. Good luck on Friday. Thank you. Gonna, good luck to you. We're going to kill it. Yeah. And I'll talk to you guys soon. Thank you very All much right. for coming on today. Okay. Bye, Joey. Stay Take black. You. Love you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right, you bad motherfuckers. I hope you enjoyed my little tete-a-tete with David Chase. Listen, guys, he had been beat up. For the last two weeks, he's been doing press. Three weeks. He's been working on this movie for two fucking years. And I know this. So I didn't want to bust his balls. I didn't want to ask him the same question that he's been getting asked for the same, you know, people ask you the same questions the last two weeks. So I wanted to switch it up a little bit, you know. Uh, I'm happy you enjoyed it. I enjoyed speaking to him. I enjoyed being in this movie, and I enjoyed being a part of this. And it's... For the first time in my life, I feel like there is a real feather in my cap. I really did something. I got a medal for doing this, and I'm very proud. There's a reflection of my wife, my daughter, and the person who I became. I love this movie so much. This movie got to me so much that it made me move back. There was only one place I could live when this movie came out, and it was motherfucking New Jersey. This is my home. I appreciate Rogan for offering me a home in Texas and all my other friends who wanted me to go to Mississippi and Colorado and whatnot. It was time for me to go home. There's always a time for you to go home, and I'm home, and it was because of this movie. So go to the movie theater Friday, Saturday, knock yourself out, and have a great fucking time and enjoy this. Uh, I want to thank David Chase. I want to thank all you motherfuckers for supporting us. And for having my back and for supporting me and watching this film. I love you cocksuckers with all my heart. Stay black. Have a great weekend. And I'll see you guys Monday morning, 
tip top Magoo, it'll be October. Next time I see you, it'll be October, cocksucker. I better not see you motherfuckers till October, you fucking douchebags. <laughs> anyway, I love you, cocksuckers. And now for a word from my motherfucking sponsors, Jack. All right, I want to thank David Chase. I want to thank Michael for helping me put the podcast together today. But most importantly, I want to thank you fucking savages for always having my motherfucking back and supporting what we're doing here. David Chase is a great man talented as fuck and I'm happy I got the opportunity to work with him but enough of that the joint is brought to you by DraftKings listen fuck your fucking bookie fuck these other fucking services DraftKings is the official sports betting partner of the NFL and of the UFC it don't get no better than that they're safe reliable and the convenient you can withdraw your money whenever you fucking want they got a tremendous casino blackjack poker Roulette, Baca Rock. I mean, you know, you got Chinese people there standing behind you. They don't give a fuck. And football's here. It's week three, and you're still fucking around. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. DraftKings has an offer that is fucking bananas. They're giving new customers $150 instantly. Joey, how can they give you $150? Just bet a dollar on any football game. College or pro. You heard me, cocksucker. Head to DraftKings Sportsbook app today. Bet a dollar and get $150 in free bets instantly. Did you hear me? If Sportsbook ain't your thing or it's not available to you because it's not legal, that's fine. DraftKings has a daily fantasy contest. They're giving away huge cash prizes all fucking season long. So if football ain't your thing, you still got golf. You got MMA, you got baseball, you got college football, you got so many different options, but it starts with you downloading the Draft DraftKings Sportsbook app today, right now. Like I said, DraftKings is giving all new customers a free shot at millions of dollars in total prizes with your first deposit. Download the, Dra download the DraftKings Sportsbook app or download the DraftKings Fantasy. With the Sportsbook app, listen, you put a dollar in, and you win $150 on any football game. Use promo code Joey, okay? They're the official betting partner of the NFL. New Jersey, Indiana, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, Colorado, new customers only. Minimum $5 deposit and a $1 wage is required. That's it. This is a fucking gift. One per customer. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Now, if you got a gambling problem, listen, take care of it. Call 1-800-GAMBLER. If you're in Indiana, call 1-800-9-WITH-IT. But if there's no problems, and there won't be on DraftKings because you pay as you bet. You can't get out of control. Let's have some fun, cocksuckers. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. It's time to win some fucking gear this here. The joint is also brought to you by CBD Lion. When it comes to CBD, there's only one motherfucking lion. That's it. That's it. CBD Lion is the CBD you should be using. Whether it's the tincture, you put it under your tongue, you wait 20 minutes and you relax. Whether it's the cream, whether it's the gel, the kinesiology tape, they got some fucking hemp, some CBD hemp that'll knock you out. You don't see it no more. Why? Because I smoked it. It helps with your anxiety, cocksuckers. That's what CBD Lion's all about. Whether it's the kinesiology tape, the bath balls, the vapor pen, we got you covered in every fucking avenue we can. CBD Lion is that good. It's not like you're dealing with some fucking guy with a GED at a gas station. This is real. These are college-educated fucking people. They're the best company around, so I don't know what the fuck you're waiting for telling me that your elbow hurts. Get to CBDLion.com right now. Read. Read everything you got coming to you. Read the advantages of CBD, CBN, and CBY, and then get back to me, cocksuckers. Go to CBDLion.com, press in Joey, and get 20% off delivered right to your house. CBD, who's better than you? Nobody. CBD Lion slash Joey. The joint is also brought to you by the best underwears in the world, in my fucking opinion. Me undies. Comfort? Comfort is their middle name. It's the fall. That means you'll be pissing your pants one way or another. Between the Halloween kids and fucking, or you're drinking too much at the fucking game. Go ahead, ruin your pants. You know why? Because you could buy some fresh ones from motherfucking MeUndies. MeUndies are the most comfortable underwears ever. I've been wearing them for six fucking years and that's all I wear. 
no holes, nothing. That cotton is tremendous. Me undies are designed to be the softest thing on earth. Softer than a baby's butt. Softer than a feather. Softer than a jack-o'-lantern that's been sitting in the sun. How? Me undies signature micro moldal fabric literally grows on trees. That means these underwears are soft and sustainable. What's better than that? Nothing. Nothing. They offer millions of sizes from extra small if you're a fucking x-ray to 4x if you're a chubby dude like Uncle Joey. Different cuts for different butts. That's their motto. You, they got bras, they got socks, they got loungewear, but it all starts with you by going to meundies.com slash Joey. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to get you 15% off your first order, free shipping, and 100% satisfaction money back guarantee. That's meundies.com slash Joey. But make a decision quick, because there's somebody standing right behind you. Look, you look, you fucking mook. I love you, cocksuckers. Go to MeUndies. I want to thank MeUndies. I want to thank CBD Lion. I want to thank DraftKings. I want to thank Zip Recruiter. I want to thank Bowling Branch for having me this week. I love you motherfuckers with all my goddamn heart. Stay black. Have a great weekend. Don't forget to see the many saints in Newark and before you see the movie don't forget to stop at the ice cream shop and get some fucking laughing gas from Uncle Joey Diaz it's getting stronger and stronger by the day last time I smoked it my eye popped out trust me you don't need the fucking aggravation I love you guys see you Monday uh, let me know what you thought of the movie you're gonna love it I wanna thank David Chase again but I want to thank you guys for always having my back. Stay black. Have a great weekend, cocksuckers. <laughs> Tip top Magoo. <laughs>